but there will not be any impulse-based movements on behalf of the sitting U.S. president. Let's discuss President Biden's big week of foreign policy, among other trending topics, with two former State Department officials who know all about this stuff, David Tafiri and Christian Whiten. Great to have you both with us. Thanks, Shannon. Good to be here. Okay, so let's start with GOP Senator Ted Cruz. This is how he is assessing uh, the meetup with Putin. You know, for four years, we heard Democrats saying, Russia, Russia, Russia. Well, what did Joe Biden do? He just gave a multi-billion dollar gift to Vladimir Putin. He waived the mandatory sanctions on Nord Stream 2. So, Christian, he walks in now, President Biden, with that assessment from his critics here at home, uh, saying that he's talked tough and he is promising that he's going to get tough with Putin face to face. But so far, the actions he ta he's taken, they would argue, are to Putin's benefit. Yeah, it's actually even worse than what Senator Cruz made out. You know, Biden and his uh, uh, top officials and the National Security Advisor threatened a cyber war retaliation against Russia. They said if Russia was, in fact, guilty of the solar winds attacked, uh, then th we would do more than just sanction. We would respond in cyberspace. In fact, Russia has been fingered as the assailant in that attack, and there was no measurable response. Um, and also, Biden goes into this as the supplicant. He had a lot of tough talk. He went on ABC and called Putin a killer. That's very odd diplomacy for someone who says he's an expert in diplomacy. But then when Putin showed that he can do things that the West is unwilling to do anything about, like massing troops on the Ukrainian border, that's when this administration panicked and asked for this meeting. So he goes in with no clear agenda and not a lot of chips on his side of the table. So, David, what does President Biden need to do or accomplish here? What would be considered a win for him coming out of this meeting with Putin? Well, I agree that the success of this overseas trip, the president's first overseas trip, will be based on how he does in his face-off with Vladimir Putin. I don't agree with Christian that he is in any way giving something up by meeting with Putin. In fact, I think he's meeting with Putin in order to deliver a very tough message. He has given Putin something positive, which is he's agreed not to continue to keep the sanctions on the company that's building the Nord Stream 2 project. But I think Biden is going to demand something in return. He's going to want to show progress by Putin in not engaging in anti-democratic behavior, not interfering in our election, and not supporting cyber attacks on the U.S., backing off of the eastern border with Ukraine, moving some of those troops that he's amassed on the eastern border. And if Putin does not follow through on each of those things, I believe that the Biden administration is going to take a much tougher stance against Putin than Trump did. And they're going to put significant sanctions mm. on Putin and on Russia. And most importantly, part of the reason that Biden is meeting with G7 leaders and with NATO leaders is he wants to galvanize them to support him in a tougher approach to Russia where we box in Russia. Let's see how if he is ac well, accomplishes that. Yeah, I look forward to the readouts from both sides, from both countries. Once that meeting is over, it could be very enlightening. Quickly, I want to ask you all about something the president has stayed out of, which is this domestic um, civil war here for the Democrats, a bit over Congresswoman Ilhan Omar and others within the squad uh, about statements that she's made. They say she's being attacked all the time because she's a woman of color. She's a Muslim woman. Um, Democratic leaders co uh, have come out and said she needed to clarify remarks that in involved uh, the U.S. and Israel being in the same sentence uh, with the Taliban and Hamas. Uh, Democratic leadership says they believe it is taken care of. No further action necessary. Quick comment from you both on where this stands tonight. Christian, to you first. Yeah, there, there's nothing to clarify here because it's crystal clear. She's anti-Semitic. She sees that there's moral equivalence between Hamas, the United States, and Israel, and she wants Israel to be wiped off the face of the earth just like Hamas. This isn't her first time at this type of rodeo either. You recall last year she said it's all about the Benjamins, referring to AIPAC, the pro-Israel lobbying group. That was viewed as anti-Semitic. You know, when Stephen King, a Republican, said things that were viewed as racist, he was kicked off of every committee by his fellow Republicans, and even though he was reelected, he is still kicked off of every committee. When are the Democrats going to get serious about this? And I think the real issue is they can't because this is a big part of their constituency, are people who really have these abhorrent anti-Semitic views. David, quick final word to you. This was a stupid tweet by Representative Omar. She should know better. Equating the U.S. and Israel to the Taliban and Hamas is silly, makes her look uninformed. And it actually hurts 
what she's trying to do, which is get to the U.S. to pressure Israel to make some concessions to the Palestinian territories. I would note, however, that this happened in a colloquy with Secretary Blinken, where she actually mm -hmm. asked a reasonable question, which was, why isn't there ICC, International Criminal Court, jurisdiction over the Taliban and Hamas? And Blinken's answer was spot on, which is, he said, there should be, uh, th they should be brought to justice, but we don't have to have ICC jurisdiction over the U.S. and Israel because the internal legal systems of the U.S. and Israel will hold people accountable. And Blinken is right. Well, as Christian notes, this is not the first time she's had questionable remarks, uh, and so people are finding it increasingly difficult to give her the benefit of the doubt. But David and Christian, thank you both for weighing in. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.